ahead of the Fed chair's a speech coming up in just a couple hours, some of the nation's biggest retailers uh, this week are sending a, a warning about a variety of things. But uh, the one that really, I guess, we need to focus on is uh, warnings about the consumer and what it says about the economy and, and even the Fed. Nordstrom says credit card delinquencies are now above pre-pandemic levels. Macy says it was caught off guard by the rate at which delinquencies are rising. And Burlington Stores said lower income shoppers are under significant economic pressure. For more on the consumer, Ed Iruma is Piper Sandler, senior research analyst. Ed, the, a lot of the headline uh, grabbing uh, articles involve shrink, and everybody suddenly knows what shrink is, talks about shrinkage. But like Nordstrom said, uh, we've already factored this into some of our results. So that's not. When, when Dick Sporting Goods blamed that for its results, people were like, that sounds like a weather. That sounds like a company that which blames a bad quarter on, on the weather. They should, probably should have known this. Is there an issue? Is the real issue that the consumer is getting strapped? I mean, look, it's a confluence of issues, right? Certainly shrink is up a lot from last year. And I think in some instances, it's just an issue of timing, right? And retailers generally take inventory at the end of January. Retailers are, in some instances, opting to take an interim mid-year inventory and realizing, boy, more stuff got stolen than we thought. And, and so shrink is definitely up. Target even called out violent uh, issues in the store. We're up 120 percent. So no doubt it isn't up. But um, the consumer is also really under pressure, right? We're seeing issues on the low end. We're seeing issues on the high end. Um, and so we're seeing a very, very volatile consumer heading into that critical holiday season. Are we seeing it in the middle end? You said high you know, and low. It's across it's, the board. It's interesting that, that middle income consumer, right? No issues with unemployment. Um, you know, certainly they're watching student loans, but maybe not quite as impactful. For whatever reason, this middle upper middle seems to be an area of a consumer that still continues to spend and is relatively strong. It's really that low end with inflation and that high end potential with job loss, equity market, you know, things like that that are in, impacting their confidence. But this middle upper middle, I think, is kind of the sweet spot today. How would the Fed interpret that that uh, scenario you, you just mentioned, in your view? I mean, look, I, I'm sure the Fed's looking at a number of different indicators. I'm sure they're uh, clearly looking at things like unemployment. Um, it, it, it is just a very, very volatile consumer, you know, and, and it does seem like while the incremental pressure from inflation is abating, there are other issues like, as you called out, some of these interest rates, which are now impacting retailers that have credit cards, people are making, you know, late payments, delinquencies, which, which invariably leads to bad debt. So I'm sure, I'm sure the, the Fed's taking all these inputs. But, but clearly, credit was the theme that we've heard definitely in the second quarter as being a negative headwind. Walmart had a pretty good uh, quarter. Did, what, what, did, what did Walmart say? And then, um, you know, you got the whole Target uh, issue and, and the out, total outperformance of Walmart from Target, maybe partly because of of the cultural issues or, or whatever it is. But in terms of what we're focusing on here, the consumer, Walmart doesn't really have the high end. It's, I guess it's got the, the middle end and the low end, but still uh, perform relatively well. I would say a couple of things, right? Walmart would tell you that their customer is kind of right down the middle. So I think that supports our kind of middle income thesis. But they have also noted recently that they're seeing a higher penetration of $100,000 $100, households and higher. So they're actually getting a little bit of that higher income consumer that they haven't gotten in the past. And so, you know, they're clearly taking some share. And I think some of it's because, again, this consumer wants value today. They find it at Walmart. They want value in grocery. They're getting that at Walmart. And so I think Walmart is, is taking share. But I do think, though, it supports this idea that this middle, upper middle is a safe responding consumer today. And Target? I mean, as you pointed out, Target clearly had, you know, issues with some of the culture issues during the second quarter. You know, our sense is that things are getting better there, um, but obviously that stuff doesn't turn on a dime. Tell me about whether, with these delinquencies, is this a uh, uh, something that banks should be paying attention to? Are banks seeing it too, or, or will they eventually see it with the delinquencies? I mean, in most instances, our retailers have credit cards that are tied to banks, right? And so they have a bank partner. And the bank partner, in many instances, is responsible for helping with the underwriting process. So I'm not going to opine on the banking industry, at least from a retail perspective. These aren't retailers that are operating the credit arms themselves. They're working with these large financial institutions. And so the fact that they're seeing these delinquencies really does indicate that, at a minimum, we're seeing a normalization in the credit cycle. But we could be seeing, we could be seeing something worse as well.